Praise God for his goodness. It is good, good to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is good to proclaim the grace that God has extended to man. It is good to hear it. You know, if you don't believe that Christ came in sinful flesh like we are in, that he entered into a man's sperm, was incarnated, that is. He was incarnated in heaven before he ever came to earth. He got inside of a man's sperm or seed, the seed of Abraham. And then the Holy Ghost brought him down inside that seed of Abraham as God had made promise to Abraham. He put that seed inside of Mary, inside of her womb, having the Supreme Spirit Son of God inside of it. If you don't believe this gospel, you don't even believe St. John 3.16 You don't believe in the gospel. You don't even believe the truth about Christ. You don't believe in God. I don't care if you've been attending church or raised up in church. You don't believe the gospel. You really don't believe it. Even though you may not know you don't believe it. You don't believe it. If you don't believe that the, that Elohim Most High has a supreme son, the spirit can have children. And most of your preachers don't believe that. Most of your preachers in this country and around the world in Protestantism and Catholicism and other so-called turn themselves as believing in Jesus. They don't believe that spirit can have children or that God really has a supreme son that he begot and the Holy Ghost birthed. If you don't believe like most of your religious leaders don't believe, you don't believe in Christ. You don't believe the gospel. You're just following a rationale of men. Something that men have conjured up in their minds. You don't believe St. John 3.16. You don't believe in Jesus. Men have created or devised a Jesus of their mind and imagination that you believe in. You don't believe in Jesus Christ, even though you don't know. You don't believe in Jesus Christ. If you don't believe that the Supreme Spirit, Son of God, and God has a Son and many sons, you see, you got a problem with the Holy Ghost birthday in your children. If you don't believe God has a son. If you don't believe in God the Son, the Supreme Son of God, you don't believe in the Holy Spirit. Don't you know that? Don't you know you don't really believe that there are sons of God down here that Elohim, the Holy Ghost, is really inverted inside of men, a seed child, because you don't believe spirit can have children. You don't believe God has a son, then you don't believe in being born of the Holy Ghost. Like most of your religious leaders don't. You know, may not know it. Just look back over their doctrine. Look at this, many of their trained theologists. And look closely. And you'll see that they believe that the Father is the Son. 
of the Father change his form and call himself Son. Look close how they defend their Trinity theology. Just look close. Most of you, the people generally, you don't know nothing as concerning really what is true or not. You have to follow preachers. Most of you can't read the Bible and understand. So you go by faith in me. You be like, you know, this is what I'm saying is true. That's why you got the commentary that you're reading. You can't be led of the Spirit because you won't listen to the Spirit. The many things the Spirit will say to those that are born by the Holy Spirit, they don't agree with what men say. So you have to go get your commentary. And you go by what it tells you. Men, theologians, have devised interpretations of the scriptures of the Bible. So you go to that because you don't know. So you have to go by your faith in men and the one you choose to have faith in. You may holler, I know, I know, I know. That's just your faith talking. Your faith in men. The one that went to this seminary that taught this maybe movie, movie Bible Institute or some other school or some other Bible Institute and they have this theology and that's what you go by. And you holler, I know. That's just your faith. You don't agree with the Holy Spirit. You don't agree with the Bible. I say I know when the scripture says God gave his only begotten son, only begotten directly of himself. There are many sons of God. Then when John wrote that he was born of all of us, he was the son of God. That whosoever believed him, notice that the Father forgot. Somebody birthed him that the Father forgot him. Spirit can have children for over a million years head. God the Son entered Abraham's sperm. Many of y'all see the promise made to Abraham, and yet you believe your theologians telling you that. Jesus didn't have an earthly father. Mary just got pregnant by the Holy Ghost. Yet you say you believe the Bible. Say you believe in Jesus. You read all the things that God said to Abraham and they just go right on past you and put two and two together. Nothing comes together to you. You just follow what you hear. What comes together to you is how to put bread on your table. The means of putting you in an automobile, the means of putting clothes on your back, and those things, natural things, need to make sense to you. But to most of you, you don't even care whether or not the scriptures rightly divide or commence. You just listen to what some man says, but you can't read no way, but you won't seek God. You won't sincerely seek Him, so you just have to find somebody to follow Him. Let's say that men don't need a shepherd. Men do. All men need shepherds, and everybody don't know that. You need a shepherd. God made man. Man needs a shepherd. God spoke in one place and my people like scattered sheep upon the hill. God had never said that his people are not sh as sheep that need the shepherd. But the supreme shepherd and shepherds among men. But God has said he will give men shepherds after his own heart, pastors after his own heart, because false prophets have misguided, misguided God's people. You may wonder why you don't walk like the apostles walk and why people don't live like the apostles live and signs and wonders and righteousness and holiness you don't see among your traditional church world. It's because they don't believe the gospel that Paul preached. They don't believe the gospel the day that Peter preached. Your preachers do not believe and your, your, you do not believe, most of you do not believe that God the Father has a supreme son. And that son entered into a man's sperm. Most you don't believe that. And the Holy Ghost brought that sperm down from heaven and inseminated and put it inside of Mary's womb. The Holy Ghost overshadowed her and put that sperm with the supreme spirit son of God, the creator of the universe. Inside of it, he put it inside of Mary's womb. 
and Mary conceived that sperm. And birth a born child is after developing to flesh and blood in her womb from a reproductive cell unto flesh and blood in Mary's womb. The word was made flesh. She birthed a baby boy, Emmanuel. Literally, God with us as one of us. You would be amazed to know the people that don't believe that. You would be amazed to the people in the church that don't believe what I just said. You would be amazed to know the people in the church world that will stand against that statement of the gospel, the foundation of the gospel. You would be amazed. They would perceive it's too high for me. And you know those in the days of, of Christ, they didn't have a problem with seeing Jesus as a man. As he called himself the son of man, they didn't totally even understand his wording and call himself that. Their problem was not seeing him as a man because they were looking at him walking around in flesh and blood just like them and bearing Mary's resemblance. Their problem was seeing him as the son of God. Their problem was not like men and they seen him as actually being a man of human flesh and blood like they are people that they have the problem of seeing him as a man. But back in that day, they were looking at him. So they had problems problem of seeing him as the son of God. Some people don't realize this. So when Jesus was saying among them, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? They were looking at him and said, well, we see you, son of man. Or, and him continue saying that. That's kind of like God saying to Ezekiel. As we call it in the 37th chapter, Ezekiel says, son of man, can these bones live? Oh, Ezekiel understood. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a man boy. I'm a man seed of a man's son. So we can relate that son of a man. Son of man. So when Christ was saying, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? They didn't have a problem with that that day. But see, Christ knew it would be a problem in future days. When men would not perceive him as really being a man like them, or actually having a earthly Father, having actually entered a man's sperm and thereby becoming a man's son as well God's son. A dual nature becoming one person. The Supreme Spirit Son of God took on a man's sperm as a body to come to earth in. And was conceived, that body, see, body was conceived of Mary by the Holy Ghost put it inside of her. And he actually was born fully man. And your preachers don't believe this, and most of you don't believe this. You see, you cannot perceive yourself walking in righteousness like Christ if you don't realize Christ is in sinful human flesh like we're in. Born in sin and shaped in iniquity and yet lived without sinning. There's a reason why your preachers omit that or many of them even deny that. Because they don't have faith in Christ to be able to be born into a body like them and then live righteous. They will say they will contaminate Christ. Christ took on sinful flesh as we are in. Took on him the seed of Abraham. He was born into sin that we may live again, literally. And he walked in sinful flesh, tempted in all points like as we are. And in his death, he condemned sin in the flesh. He never yielded to the sin nature. He never sinned. And he condemned sin in the flesh. He died in a place of mankind dying without any sin. So he substituted. See, you don't sin, you can't have condemnation. And death don't have the right to take you down. It don't have the right. You see, even Adam was created with a nature to sin when the law was given. When the law was given, it just showed the nature. 
one long to eat off the tree. It showed the nature of Eve and Adam. And the law said, don't eat off the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. When they ate off of it, it gave them a law inside of them. They took a law inside themselves. The awareness of right and wrong. And that showed their nature to be sinful continually. Matter of fact, it made it to be sin nature then. Because there was a law inside of it. The awareness of right and wrong. Condemning the very nature. Which law also worked death inside of man. Adam eventually died. As Eve eventually died. You see, when Christ took on sinful flesh, he had a nature that was sin nature, but he never sinned. Even Adam could not be condemned as long as they had not sinned. There's a need for sin, but then to come in. Christ had a nature that could not condemn him unto death because he never yielded to it. See, with man, the nature condemns man. Condemns men to death. But Christ having power over the nature, never yielding to the nature, Death had no power. Didn't have the authority nor the power to kill him. Can kill a baby. I'll explain that. Without the knowledge of good and evil, yet having the compulsions to do evil within this very being, though the knowledge of good and evil, that hereditary substance. That Adam and Eve ate of it is hereditary passed down to us, and it develops in us from a baby as our bodies develop. And about the age of twenty, it develops in maturity in us. Then we come to the awareness of right and wrong when the substance has fully developed in us. But before that, but in this, I understand with Christ. He did not have, what you see, he didn't have uh, the condemnation. He had power over the condemnation. In living right and power to set this one commandment, have my father, lay my life down, and I take it up again. No man take it from me. So death couldn't conquer him. He never sinned, and he had power over it. Being the Son of God. I'll explain this more another time. Christ condemned sin in the flesh, made the way for men to be without condemnation. Those who join in him, there is no condemnation. Beyond the no laws, totally just before God. But men today, I want to try to explain something that will take me somewhere else. So I'll come back to those things and explain more another time. Men today deny the foundation of the gospel, Christ taking on the seed of Abraham. His death was for the sins of the first testament and for the ending of the first testament. Y'all don't believe that. You're taught against that. This is not your gospel. This Bible is not your gospel. The Jewish Christianity, Judaism is taught by the scripture. Judaism is Christianity. It's not your Christianity. There's a difference in European Christianity and Judaism Christianity. European Christianity is faith alone, grace alone, things of that land. You know, you got Martin Luther, you got uh, Calvinism and stuff too, but European Protestantism Christianity is major, large part is faith alone, grace alone. 
What you do ain't got nothing to do with your salvation and all that stuff. That's not Judaism Christianity or the teaching of the Bible. That's European Christianity. Y'all don't know that. So I'll tell you that. You don't know that. The scripture teaches not that Christ died for your sins. That's not Judaism Christianity. That's European Christianity. Judaism Christianity teaches Christ's death but for the sins under the first testament. Hebrews 9 15. Judaism Christianity teaches that Christ was made under law to redeem them that were under law. That's Judaism Christianity. Judaism Christianity teaches that as Paul wrote to Romans, brother, you became dead to law by the body death of Christ. And it was his death that redeemed the sins of the Old Testament. Judaism Christianity teaches that after Christ's death, he yielded forth blood, miraculously, miraculously yielded forth blood for a new testament, even his will and testament, and for the remission of sins under his testament, Matthew 26. That's Judaism Christianity. European Christianity teaches Jesus died for your sins under the New Testament. European Christianity teaches that Jesus' blood washes away sins on the Old and New Testament. Stuff like that. Sometimes they run it together. European Christianity teaches not that Christ died for the, his death but for the sins under the First Testament. They teach that his death was for the sins coming, the death penalty that shall be pronounced at the end of the world. That's European Christianity. Judaism Christianity teaches that man was condemned, that passed over day, that Christ hung on the cross. It was the end of the world for me, and death passed over the world and came on the firstborn Son of God. That's Judaism Christianity. After his death, he gave blood. See, man continued that he substituted for man. After his death, he gave blood for his will and testament, a new testament unto men and even the heritage to men. And his blood was for the remission of sins under his will and testament. It's a new era that came in. That testament came into force at his resurrection after he spent three nights and three days in hell with lake burning fire and brimstone. Because at sundown he crossed over into hell from Abraham's bosom of paradise, and he was there for three nights and three days. And he did that because mankind after death was appointed. If man had died, they would have to go to hell. Those that were dead would have had to go to hell, including Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all who were in paradise. They would have to have went to hell. Their spirits would have went to hell. So he had to pay that price, total redemption of body and spirit. Christ redeemed both the dead and the living for the shortcoming of the Ten Commandments and the laws and the knowledge of good and evil. Even Abraham came short of the, ten, of the knowledge of good and evil. He was before the Ten Commandments and the laws forgiven of his great 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 grandson Moses. This great great grandson Moses. You need to understand that. See, there's a difference in Judaism Christianity and European Christianity. Christ had to redeem man for that shortcoming of the knowledge of the evil and law. His death was for that shortcoming. After his resurrection, his testament came in the force. His will and testament became the force. The blood of his testament was accepted of the Father as the Father raised him. And his blood was for also remission of sins under his testament, a new testament. That's why you have the Bible made up of his, you got a new testament in the Bible. The first one became old. That's why it's called old. The second one, his testament became a new testament. That's why it's called a new testament. You don't understand this. There's a difference in European Christianity and Judaism Christianity. See, when you say Christ died for your sin, you're not talking Judaism Christianity or the Bible. That's European Christianity. When you say you're saved by faith alone, grace alone, that does not include the spirit of grace, you don't have to obey the Holy Spirit. That's 
your opinion. I'm not saying every and all of your opinion. There's a difference among your opinions in their interpretation. But there's a European Christianity version. You need to know that that's not Judaism Christianity. You may have, have had Europeans tell you Judaism means to not believe in Jesus. No, that's a lie. That's Judaism. That's Europeans interpretation of Judaism. Paul never turned from Judaism. Moses taught Judaism. Jeremiah, when they prophesied of Christ's coming, was teaching Judaism. When Isaiah foretold of the Messiah coming, that's Judaism. Foretold in Jeremiah, he said, I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah after those days. That's Judaism. Talking about being born of the Holy Ghost. Which is the promise unto me and through Christ's will and testament. A different covenant than the covenant of the Old Testament. The covenant of the, of the Old Testament, it was carried in an ark of the covenant. In a box overlaid with gold. Inside was the covenant, the Ten Commands, wrote on stone, table, table stones, and wrote laws within a book. That's the covenant of the Old Testament. The covenant of the New Testament of Christ is will and testament is the Holy Ghost. You must be born of God. A seed child of the Holy Ghost must be inverted inside you. This is the covenant of the New Testament to be born into the kingdom of heaven as a child of God. Everybody don't accept the gospel. European Christianity teaches something different from Judaism Christianity from teaching. You need to know that. Because you have faith in somebody. You may not even understand the Bible because you've been trained or taught a certain kind of reasoning to come to your version of how you think Christianity is. Paul said, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that which they preached, let it be accursed. Paul never taught Jesus died for your sins under the New Testament. Paul was born under the Old Testament. He gave his testimony in Corinthians 15. He said, Brother, I deliver unto you first of all that which I also received. How that Christ died for their sins, writing to the Corinthians who were of the transition generation. See, your preachers are not taught these things. What I'm doing is not an understanding that's even with your preachers. This gospel that I'm proclaiming now has not been proclaimed for over a thousand years. In the appointed time, God has sent me and anointed me and put inside me from the womb the spirit of Elijah to proclaim the truth of the gospel and given witnesses with me. Now my wife is a witness with me proclaiming this gospel and restoring the truth of the gospel along with me to my supply. This is his point of purpose. And the spirit of Elijah instructs me and the Holy Ghost within me instructs me. But it's another gospel to you. When Paul wrote to Romans and said, Brother, you became dead to law by the body of Christ over 1900 years ago. Your preachers don't accept that. That they died to the law 1900 years ago. Christ substitute for men dying. How can men still be on the law? You need to hear the truth of the gospel. Thank you.